Hello all, thanks for stopping by. I wanted to spend just a few minutes, share a few photos of this Chanti Clear Radio Model 2D570 manufactured in Los Angeles, California back in the early to mid-1930s. For those of you that have followed my channel, a few months back I posted a video. I wanted your input on which radio to restore next. So again, this Chanti Clear 2D570 is the radio of choice. As well, I'm working on a Grunel that belongs to my father. So I'll be working on it and posting a few videos along the way. I'm sure you've noticed by now this chassis is just a big mess. Uh, there's just tons of rust. I'm sure there were some mice hanging out up here for a while on top and also underneath. We know that to be a fact. So there's going to be considerable time, um, days, may even take me a week or so just off and on to try to de-rust this chassis. I'll start by removing the variable tuning condenser, the speaker, uh, the choke on the back of the chassis. I may leave the IF can standing in the beginning and just de-rust around it just to get a better indication if I'm going to have to strip this thing completely down. I'll show some underneath side of the chassis shots as well. I do have some spot rusting there, but I may be able to actually just remove those in those locations and then prime back over the top of them. The variable tuning condenser is a big mess. It's going to take some extra focus uh, for sure. Not only is there a lot of surface rust, but the plates themselves have a lot of corrosion. So I, was, I know I'm going to have to spend considerable time in that area. In addition to the uh, tuning condenser, the speaker housing itself and all the fabrication around it is just uh, totally gummed up. Um, just a lot of corrosion in that area, so um, I'll have to tackle that also in the, in the speaker cone. Looks to be used up, so um, you know in the beginning I'll probably leave it as is just to see what I can get out of it, but uh, looks like it's going to have to be recombed for sure. One thing that stands out to me on this radio is the dial. It's only three inches in diameter. But I tell you, the level of detail is totally amazing for that period of time. And I think once I get it cleaned up, it will display well. Moving along to the underside of the chassis, here's the photo I showed before. You know, what a mess it was. Um, again, there appears to be a, a rodent or more that uh, had a nest there underneath. And I tell you, there's some things chewed up here you can see in the photos, but uh, it's not you know, too awful bad. I spent considerable time just kind of picking that stuff out and um, again sanitizing the chassis uh, best I could. The majority of the components underneath the chassis appear to be original from the period of time. I see uh, three or four repairs that are obvious that have been made. And again, you can see here in the photo uh, some of the rust that I mentioned and I'll try to work on those areas and leave everything intact and see if I can't remove it. Um, in addition, I removed the, uh, the little cardboard box uh, container that had a capacitor bank in it. There was some, uh, definitely some rust underneath that. You probably also see the big power resistor that's laying there in parallel with the uh, candome resistor. I checked in one section of the candome resistor is actually open. And that kind of makes sense. It's the section open to reduce uh, the, the voltage by, I think, around 30-some volts or so. I tell you, every time I take a look at one of these old radios, I'm amazed at the electrical engineering capacity at that time. You know, the engineers just did a fantastic job. In addition, you know, never discount the mechanical aspects of the engineering as well. Here's a perfect example. You can see here where the candome resistor was placed. Spacers were added between the candome and the chassis to allow the heat to escape. On the back side of the chassis, there's a small horizontal bar, and it's actually like a tack down location for components. And I started looking at it close, and that's actually a floating area. It's not tied back to the chassis ground itself. 
So I'm glad I looked at that close. I didn't make a mistake and replace, you know, the insulating material with metal and uh, create a bigger problem for me on the restoration itself. Here's a look at that cardboard container for the uh, capacitors that I mentioned earlier show that I had removed. Um, you can see the rodent really got a hold of it and worked it over pretty well. One thing I failed to mention too, the schematic, I didn't find an exact match for this particular radio, but it appears I'll be able to use a uh, cadet or international all-wave schematic or the uh, uh, Pacific Radio Corporation. Uh, there's also another schematic, and just looking at some of the components, they're all relatively close, um, even though just doing some spot checks on this one, they're not exact. Uh, but I think I'll uh, you know, just replace everything that's in there, take note, match it up against a couple known schematics for radios of similar design. And if anything is uh, very far off, then I'll uh, you know, do a closer deep dive on it. Something else I wanted to mention, the choke on the back of the chassis itself is open. So I'm going to have to look at that a lot closer. I may have an open uh, choke and have to replace it during the restoration process, or this may be as simple as a cold solder joint. So more time will be spent on that. When I get to that, I did check the IFs, and they appeared to be... Uh, okay, and I checked some of the other coals and had resistance. A couple of them were odd, but I had everything was in circuit instead of out of, out of the circuit. And I know I may be getting some false indications there, so I'm going to cross my fingers and just go ahead and move forward after I do the uh, de-rusting and see if I can't get this thing piece back together. I'll probably start the restoration after the Thanksgiving holiday. So again, for those that joined, I appreciate you doing so. This is the uh, Chanti Clear Radio 2D570. Again, it's a West Coast radio. I think it's kind of rare. I look forward to getting the electrical side behind me, then we'll tackle the, uh, the cabinet probably in the early spring of 2015.